Spanks as a cure for hot boxes. Gear boxes, that is. Factory trans coolers exist for a reason. And if your truck's a grocery getter, your factory trans cooler is probably adequate. But if you haul heavy, live where it's hot, or climb serious grades, chances are your transmission and torque converter are living life on the edge. For 66 years, Banks Endurance Racing Engines have always had a weak link. The transmission. Our engines have always made enough power to kill transmissions. So keeping transmissions alive has become our art form. And it starts with heat dissipation. In 2001, the five-speed Allison in the Duramax LB7 was rated to handle an input of 520 pound-feet. Guys have done a lot to these older trucks, like a cold air intake, turbo, intercooler, tuning, and all that jive, are making well over 1,000 pound-feet. In the newer L5Ps, the 10 speed is rated at 975 pound feet. But if you've tuned your newer truck, you could be pushing over 1200 pound feet. In all of these cases, trans temp is your enemy. So what's the jeopardy with over temp in this baby? Well, for starters, the truck's ECM is in the business of saving the transmission. Let me give you some background. Optimal temps are 175 to 225. Within this range, the fluid maintains its viscosity to provide adequate lubrication, cooling, and hydraulic pressure for gear changes. When you get above 240, you start getting into the danger zone. There are additives in the fluid that prevent oxidation or thickening of the fluid. Other additives help with clutch holding capacity and torque transfer, and some reduce shuddering when the torque converter clutches slip. At 240, these additives begin to break down. Once they break down, you've damaged the trans fluid and they're gone. The clutches begin to slip, causing even more heat. At 260, seals begin to harden, leading to leaks or pressure loss and the clutches slip even more. At 300, the ECM tries to protect the transmission by going into limp mode, locking it in a lower gear, often third and leaving you with just enough power to get off the road and get home. Maybe. Well, I've got news for you. We've developed something to help prevent those high temps from occurring in the first place. This is the new Banks Ram Air Transmission Pan, our latest durability tool. When we set out to lower fluid temps in the Allison, we applied what we learned during the development of our patented Ram Air differential covers. As you can see, we offer a complete line of fluid cooling products from trans pans and oil pans to oil cooler upgrades. So how do we achieve cooler temps? By capturing cool air flowing under the truck and forcing it to flow over the surface of our long, thin, densely packed fins. To make this happen, we designed a ram air scoop that captures air, compresses it, and accelerates it. When air is rammed into the scoop, its density is increased. That means more molecules in every cubic foot of air, and more molecules means more capacity to scrub off heat. The only way to get more air density passing through the fins is to ram it in, and it works. That's why it's patent pending, because we've done something no one else has. Now, if winter's a concern, four bolts and the scoop is off. Or if it hits something, it's designed to break away without affecting the pan. And if that ever happens, I'll send you a replacement scoop on the house. So now that you know that there's air rushing over the fins, let's have a look at the fins. We're looking head on. The fins go all the way front to back. And let's, let's have a look at the inside as well to give you an idea of what's going on inside. If we roll the pan around and push through, there's something about the thermal path from the fluid to the air that I want you to see, something we've done here. Now you see the fins connect from the inside to the outside, so there's a direct heat path on all those fins. So now we've got the highest level of fin density uh, in the marketplace and the best heat path from the inside to the outside. We call these flow through fins. It's impossible to match the fin surface area that we have on the inside and the outside without going to high pressure die cast. But how do we amp it up even more than that? 
Taking a look at the bank's Ram Air Transpan, it has a magnetic drain plug at the lowest point, so the pan drains completely without removing it from the transmission. Now you may say, but Gail, don't I have to drop the pan to change the filter? Well, the Allison 1000 has an external spin-on filter, which they recommend changing fairly frequently. Allison recommends replacing the spin-on filter at 50, 100, and 150,000 miles. They want fluid changes at 75 and 150,000. So at 150,000, you're replacing both the filter and the fluid. Then you start the cycle all over again. They only call for the internal filter to be changed when the transmission is overhauled. So in other words, you're not dropping the pan unless you're taking the trans down to the bare case. The only problem I see with the Allison instructions is that they don't address the two quarts of dirty fluid trapped in their pan. Whoa, wow. Look at how much fluid is still in there. Wow, it's a damn weld nut. That's the problem. It's sticking up into the fluid volume and not letting it all out. Now there's probably some left in the torque converter. We're not gonna get that, but we should be getting this. And with this setup, if you want this dirty fluid out, you gotta pull the pan off the tranny. Matt, I'm real curious, how much is in this pan? Do you mind pouring it into the cylinder? Woo! My money's on a quart and a half. Let's see what we get. There's a thousand milliliters, that's a quart. There's a quart and a half, we're still going. 1,600, 1,700. It looks like 1,850 milliliters. It's real close to two quarts. Unbelievable, well now you can see all the problem in there. The sheet metal's pushed up a half an inch. The nut adds another half inch, so you've got an inch of fluid all the way across the bottom. With the Banks Ram Air Transmission Pan for the Allison 5, 6, and 10 speed, you'll get a more complete drain without pulling the pan because we've added a magnetic drain plug at the very lowest point. So let's talk about how we manufactured these pans. This really matters. There are two popular methods of casting aluminum sand casting and die casting. Sand casting is one of the earliest forms of metal casting. This method involves molten metal being poured into a sand mold. The only thing helping the aluminum to flow into the mold is gravity. The sand cast mold is rough and typically leaves a rough finish. Another problem is porosity. That's where voids or holes in the casting are caused by hydrogen gas entrapment. And when you sand cast, thicker walls are required to avoid cold shuts. Cold shuts are where streams of metal entering the mold through various gates don't completely fuse together due to premature cooling. That's why some of these aftermarket pans are so thick. If you look closely, you can find welds in the casting where a cold shut has been repaired but has not been ground completely smooth. I'm here to tell you, we never sand cast our lubrication products. This eliminates any risk of sand contamination in the fluid. Which brings me to die casting. With die casting, aluminum is rammed into the bowl. This is the right way to cast lubrication products. Aluminum is heated to 1300 degrees, injected into a preheated H13 tool steel mold at 5,500 pounds per square inch. It happens instantaneously. The result is a precision casting with no porosity, no cold shuts, and no welds. The surface finish is as smooth as a baby's butt, which is good for fluid flow. And the walls will be thinner and dense as hell, which is great for heat transfer and thermal recovery. In other words, thinner, denser walls allow heat to exit more quickly. The only downside to die casting is that the molds cost a fortune, but the result is worth the effort. It all starts with the stock stamped steel version, which has an exclusive two-quart dirty oil retention feature right here. 
The Mag High Tech, it has the fins running transversely across on the inside and linearly on the bottom. They cross each other. No chance at a flow through fin design. Which brings me to the Banks Ram Air Transpan. We add two quarts, it's die cast, it has flow through fins that align with the fins on the outside. The fins flow to the pickup, it drains at the lowest point, it gives you lower peak fluid temps and quicker cool down. It prevents thickening and preserves the additives. And here's a little surprise. This little piece of jewelry is the drain plug. It's got a Banks logo on it. It's got a massive high temperature magnet, which means as fluid temp goes up, magnetic capability does not go down, which happens with other magnetic drain plugs. It's a bit of stainless steel jewelry and it seals with an O-ring. The performance is largely due to the die casting, the design, and the ram air feature, which none of the other pans have at all. This guy. This isn't just another aftermarket trans pan. It was a full engineering effort by an engine design and manufacturing company. You may not know this, but Banks is the exclusive engine supplier to the U.S. Army's Joint Light Tactical Vehicle Program. This engine business didn't just fall into our laps. We battled it out with the likes of Caterpillar and Cummins, just to name a few. Over 25,000 JLTVs are powered by Banks D866T engines. The knowledge that we gained from these engines is used in performance parts that you can bolt on your truck. This Ram Air fluid cooling technology is already covered by an existing Banks patent. So you guys who've been ripping off everything I'm doing, this one's off limits. It's available for the Allison 5 and 6 speed, the newer Allison 10 speed, and for the Mopar Ram 68 RFE. And you can get them in any color you want, as long as it's high temp Banks black powder coat, because black radiates heat the best. When we set out to lower fluid temps, we didn't realize we'd be revolutionizing Transpan design. We weren't trying to put the other Transpan guys out of business. It just kind of happened.